Fast Forward Productions. The women are speaking. Hi, guys. Welcome back to The Unfiltered Entrepreneur. I'm your host, Ashley Pollard, and I love today's episode. Today, we're talking about trends and the Q1 trend report that I create specifically for my community, the doers. Now, I do give the doers the trend report right before the quarter starts so that they're heading into the quarter with tons of information of what I foresee happening in the next three months. Now, I have to have some things special just for them because I do give so much away for free, but I will release all trend reports as I always have around the middle of the quarter, and we're there now. So I wanted to share with you the trends that I forecasted for Q1 as we headed into it. I gave it to them at the end of 2023 or created this at the end of 2023, and they are receiving soon the Q2 trend report, whether you're in the library or the doers club. Now, why I think it's important to dive into trend reports and to understand what's on the horizon is that there are people really paying close attention to the evolution of industry, to the people who are tastemakers, who are changing the game, who are really pushing the needle forward. And by taking note of what we're seeing work, what we're seeing not work, you are able to learn from those things instead of learning in real time from your own you know, trial and error. Now, when I'm creating and thinking about trend reports, I'm looking at so many hundreds of different accounts and specifically for you in the service-based industry, in this online space. And what I'm noticing is who's launching something and doing it a second time. When they do it a second time, is there something they add? Because it's probably a community ask. Who's raising their prices? Who's lowering their prices? Who is complaining on social media? And what are they complaining about? What's getting all of the comments? What's not getting so many comments? What are people asking consistently in the doers and what are problems that I'm seeing consistently occur in the doers? These are all different things that help me shape my trend reports outside of the fact that I'm an avid trend report reader in many different ways. I'm always listening to trend reports. If you head to the link in bio, we actually have a link to Team AP Consulting's quarterly podcast recommendations by tuning into different podcasts, specifically if they're timely and newly released you're going to start picking up on trends. Now, you don't have to be following everybody. And like I said, you don't have to learn through trial and error. I have been trained in trend forecasting. And so I have an eye for this anyway. I'm the one who wants to bring you these trends that you can stay focused in the work and take it from me for different trends that I see on the horizon. What I'm going to share with you today are three major trends that we see for kind of all of 2024, but you may see these kicking off in Q1. And then secondly, different learnings that we have from each prior quarter. This is how we construct the trend report. So if you've downloaded the trend report, this is exactly similar to those things. There's nothing new here. In those quarterly trend reports, we include three things we want you to keep your eye on, as well as three things we've learned from the prior quarter that you could learn from us instead of learning the hard way. Let's dive into our first three, the trends that we see on the horizon for Q1. The first one is the rise of what we call anti-merch merch. And what anti-merch merch is, is this idea that people are really diving into merch in a major way, but we're foregoing the logo aspect of it all. Now at Dial Zero Marketing, we do anti-merch for like pretty much everybody that we work with because merch is such a valuable way for people to get intrigued with the brand without just looking at a logo. Now, a logo might seem like really easy marketing, right? Oh, what's that company? I've never heard of them before. But it's very unlikely that someone sees a logo, sees a brand identifier and says, I love them all of a sudden and I want to follow them and know everything about their business. Instead, what we want to evoke with this anti-merch merch is really cool clothing people want to wear. So instead of someone seeing a logo, they may see a hoodie that they're dying to buy and say, where did you get that? And then they're pointed to your website. You'll see this in the Team AP slash Cocky Ventures space. We really held off on launching our merch because we needed everybody's rebrand to be live. Fast Forward's rebrand is live. Team AP, Dial Zero, we're doing a judge, but that's we're not really doing anything formal there. And Me Time is coming soon. But we wanted everything to kind of be living in one place. So now you can get Cocky merch. You can get Team AP merch, the doers merch, fast forward merch, dial zero merch, and everything's kind of branded for that particular business, but nothing like says the logo on it. Even if you don't want to buy anything from the shop, I would recommend that you go check it out just so that you can kind of understand what I mean by the anti-merch merch. However, if you do want to check out the shop, you can get 50% off your first purchase with the code podcast. 
For instance, instead of us creating a hoodie that says the doers across it anymore, we might have a hoodie that says not that serious in our fun branding. So if someone sees the hoodie, they'll say, wow, where'd you get that? And you would say, Team AP Consulting. And then you have a conversation about it. Oh, this is how I found them. This is why I love them. And that creates more of a marketing opportunity than simply wearing a logo. So what we call that in Dial Zero Marketing with all of our clients and what we've called it for the past year and a half is the anti-merch merch. Feel free to take it, but know where you got it from. The second trend we're noticing is a resurgence of a need for education. People are coming back to those roots of 2020 and saying, I want to take a course. I want to download a resource. It's why we are seeing so much exponential growth with the library. People coming in and saying, I need these downloads. I need these resources. I love that I have them at my disposal. We're seeing this really pick up. And what we've noticed inside the doers, what we've noticed among our peers, what we've noticed from observing multiple businesses in the online space is what's dead is the course. What's dead is the 300, the 500, the thousand dollar course. Now, when I say these things, I have to be using generalizations. Some of you may be having success with that, and that's great. I want you to continue that. But where we are seeing the most success is the less than hundred dollar option. The business owners of today who are buying these resources, who are buying these downloads, who are buying these different pieces of really helpful information, they're not necessarily looking, nor do they have the time to sit and watch 17 modules that are each an hour long. Now, granted, I'm embellishing a bit there, but even six modules that are an hour or two hours, people don't have the kind of time anymore. What we're noticing is people want to see you can solve the exact problem I have, you can do it quickly, and I can download it and keep it running. We also believe that there's a really big lack of trust in courses because a lot of them do tend to get a bad name. You download something expensive, it doesn't really live up to your standards. So what we're noticing in the marketplace is that $97 and less or $100 and less is really where people are making their money and not even making their money, but selling like hotcakes. If you want to sell a digital product, I recommend that you at least have some sort of 50, 75, 100, even $20 option so that people have a small way that they can get their feet wet with you, that they can test out if they like what you're doing outside of the freebies. They want to see when I pay you, what do I get? So by having these less than $100 options, not only can you focus on a volume win here, and what I mean by volume win is selling a lot at a low price, you also set people up for success because they need the quick win, they need the quick answer, and they're actually going to utilize it. When people utilize and win from a resource, that's when they get loud about it and tell their communities. This is one of the reasons that you're going to see us talking so much about the library is because we've had a massive influx of people joining and testing it out through that free seven-day trial and then staying because they're saying all of this together would have been a $5,000 course and I would never have said yes to it but I cannot believe how much I get at the $97 price point. And it's true, you know, inside of the library, we have a pre-written sales page. We have all of this Instagram content support, how to close a client, how to do a discovery call. I mean, really how to run a business is inside of this library. And we aren't charging the quote unquote worth of the product. We are charging an easy yes for two reasons. One, I don't think that people are spending the money. And two, we want to make it so easy for people to say yes so that they get in, they see the value, they stick around because they love everything that we continue to add to that portal. And we see the most value there as far as serving many people versus making the quick win of a $1,500 purchase and potentially disappointing that client. And then they don't tell anyone about us or they tell people that it wasn't that worth it. The third trend I'm going to share with you sounds a little bit weird and maybe a bit morbid, but I'm calling it the death of quote unquote celebrity. Now that I'm not saying celebrities are going to pass away. That's not it. But I do think fame and the idea of fame is shifting rapidly. Now I'm not going to get into the astrology of it because we're in the age of Aquarius and it's going to question all those things anyway. That isn't even contributing to it. To me, I think it started with people like Jeffrey Epstein, whose actions are exposing all these people that we kind of put on a pedestal. I don't need to go down the Jeffrey Epstein rabbit hole with you. I'm simply saying that celebrities and our view of celebrities is shifting. It used to be that people idolized celebrity and wanted to be famous and wanted all the glitz and the glamour. But as celebrities join TikTok, People say, get the fuck out of here. We don't want to talk to you. Celebrities don't do well on social media. The rise of this pushback against the billionaire 
has created problems for people like Beyonce and Taylor Swift. The algorithm supporting the average everyday consumer and giving them stardom of their own, people like Elise Myers, people like Drew Afualo, people like Teffy, those people are gaining stardom and more followers than some celebrities by simply being themselves on the internet. Why I bring this up as a trend is because I don't think that the celebrity and that fame is necessarily going to be something that this generation is really impressed with anymore. I think the move is into being impressive and sharing your story. The people who are going to be impressive are the people who are vulnerably being themselves, being authentic, and sharing that without shame. Drew Off Wallow is her without shame. She's hating on men and schooling them online, and she's getting so much love for it. She is flying off the charts with followers. Elise Myers is a Midwest gal who has a ton of anxiety, and is just wanting to be home with her kids, and she's calling out how awkward it is to be an influencer and how she doesn't really want to be one and people are living for it. There's almost this ceiling that we see people have that when you hit a certain level, you're so out of touch that we don't really want to talk to you anymore. Now, I say we, I love a celebrity. Like, don't get me wrong. But I think part of this trend is understanding that idolization of the celebrity will affect your business. And do you want to know why? They're not setting the tone anymore. The people who are setting the tone are the people who are vulnerable and authentic. Now, when I say setting the tone, one, those are the people to emulate because what they're doing is working the best. Two, those are going to be the people setting the trends. People like Charlie D'Amelio have more followers than any other celebrity, and she just got famous from being a young girl on TikTok. Selena Gomez is the most followed person in the world on Instagram, and she doesn't even come into the top 10 on TikTok. Now, this is not a TikTok conversation. This is not celebrities or bad conversation. This is that it used to be people said, I want to be like that celebrity, and it's shifting to I want to be vulnerable and self-aware and happy like that everyday person. Understanding that and bringing that into your work is going to be something super valuable, especially because I don't think it's going anywhere. In fact, I think it's going to climb. I think that celebrities are going to have a real hard time being respected for their fame because people don't really care about it anymore. Disagree with me or not, I really don't give a fuck, to be honest. But I'm going to be right. Now let's shift out of those trends and into some of the learnings that we have and that I want to share with you so that you don't have to learn the hard way. The first one is that I stumble across this really beautiful idea of what I'm deeming the perfect year. I'm thinking about making it a freebie or at least a podcast episode on its own. So if you're interested in hearing more about the perfect year, let me know in one of the comments on one of our posts or in the comments on YouTube. Now, this idea of the perfect year kind of stems from things that I'm noticing in the doers, mixed with what I'm noticing from the roundtable, mixed with what I'm knowing from peers, but also from what I'm noticing from the thousands of people that I've supported, whether in a group program, in the doers, or in one-on-one -on -one consulting. What I've noticed is everyone has a rough Q4. I've been saying this and screaming it from a mountaintop. Black Friday can be fun to participate in. We participate in it, but we set $0 goals. I don't know many people that are killing it at Black Friday in a service-based space. I also don't know a ton of people who make a lot of money in October, November, December. So if we aren't making money October, November, December, why are we in business? And my answer there is to use that time for fun in your business and make money in the first nine months of that year to flow into those last three months so that you're chilling. Now, we did this in 2022. I said, I don't think we're going to have a strong Q4 because I've never seen a strong Q4 from any of my clients. Everybody says they have bad Q4s. I'm going to learn from them. Now, I kind of accidentally did this in 2022. I had noticed that clients were coming to me and saying, I'm not having good Q4s. Our Q fund always bombs. We don't do well in Q4. So I said, I'm going to learn from you guys. And I built up enough revenue in the beginning of 2022 to flow into Q4, and I didn't really have to work that much. That worked so well, we built that as our year model for 2023. We crushed it in Q1, crushed it in Q2, busted our ass the most we've worked those first six months. The next three months, and I'll get into this in a moment, we had some fun. We wanted to make sales, but not really. And then Q4, we used as brand building. We used this as a place to connect with our consumers, to share the podcast, to share free ideas, or to just kind of share and build the brand ethos to build the community of things. We did end up selling some things for Black Friday, again, with a zero dollar because every once in a while, I'm like, what if I'm wrong this year? I wasn't. And then in December, we closed offices. We were super chill. We took time off and we came back with our strong rebrand in January. Now, in doing this perfect year accidentally in 2022, 
And then strategically in 2023, this is what we deem as the perfect year generally. Now, I can get into specifics because I also know what week you should take off. I know what times you should hire. Like, I very much believe in this perfect year. But what we have recommended to people in the roundtable is that Q1, do what you have to do. And that means make some fucking money. Bust your ass. Work, work, work. Q2, do what's next. Now, that means still work hard. But in Q1, focus on maybe one of your services. If it was me, I'd do projects. In Q2, I would book retainers. Do you know why? Six months. That April goes into October. We're chilling. Now we have retainers coming in in Q2. Q3, do what you want. Now, this does not mean do what you want in your personal life. This means do what you want in your business. Maybe you want to launch a passive shop because you feel like it. Maybe you want to start a new kind of project because you feel like it. Do that in Q3. I don't want you to take too many risks in Q1 or Q2 unless you're really just genuinely not making money. Then what I want you to do is hustle. Get your bag. Q1, Q2, you got to make some money. Work hard. Q1, Q2, especially if you're in the service-based space. Q3, guess what people are doing? It's summer. So I want you to be able to make money in summer, but I want you to do it in summer ways. You have to think about who your consumer is. Do they want to spend time with their family? Do they want to be working because no one else is? Do they want Fridays off? So for instance, are they going to be more excited with a webinar, a download, a group program, a one-on-one situation, a project? You're going to have to make that decision for your particular audience and your particular client. But Q4 is a fun time. And I want you to do what you want, but do what you want for the business and try to still focus on revenue because we're about to hit Q4 and the money's going to dry up. Every year, people say this. It's October and I'm not making money and I'm worried I'm not going to make money through the end of the year. It's November. I'm not making money. It's December. I'm not making money. I would not plan to. I have not planned to make money in Q4 for the past couple of years. It's been a godsend. The thing is, the second that we get into Halloween shopping, we are Thanksgiving and then we're Christmas. And unless your clients pay themselves a very healthy salary, you are competing with Christmas. I don't want to compete with Christmas though. Christmas is one of the biggest establishments in the world. It's one of the biggest industries in the world, in the history of mankind. I don't want to compete with Christmas. If you want to sell anything in Q3, it has to be something you know is an automatic yes because it's tried and true and it doesn't matter that it's going to be in Q4. If it were me, I would not sell anything or I would not sell anything with a financial goal attached to it. Instead, I would use Q4 to learn about your audience and to push your brand narrative. This is a really good time for you to think about things like What are the problems that they're experiencing? What different things do they want to change before next year? What scares them about their business? What do they love about their business? What are their end goals? Why have they said no to you in the past? Why have they said yes to you in the past? Now, also in Q4, this is a time for you to enjoy yourself. This is a time for you to take on that fun project, to take time off. If I didn't rebrand the business, if I didn't want to do some back-end things that I wanted to do, if we didn't take on some clients that I wanted to do to push the business forward, I would have worked zero. Literally not at all. We put a kibosh on podcast recording. I didn't record podcasts. I didn't take on new clients except for a couple of them that were going to push the business forward. I rebranded, but I didn't have to, quote unquote. And that was fun. And to me, I really just chilled. I took a lot of days off. I took a lot of time off. I slept in. I was relaxing. And while my friends, my peers were saying to me, my well is drying up. I'm freaking out about money. I was not. And the reason I was not was because I made Q4 money in Q1, Q2, Q3, and I held onto it to last us through Q4. Do what you want. Maybe I'm wrong about how your business is run, but that's my perfect year. Do what you need to. Do what's next. Do what you want. And then have some fun. Whatever fun means to you. Maybe you shut doors. Maybe you go silent on social. No one's going to notice they're wrapped up in Christmas. But again, I don't want to compete with Christmas. I don't have an audience that's paying themselves a healthy salary. And what I mean by healthy is like 100000 or more. So they're thinking, what if I just pay myself a little bit less so that I can buy gifts for the family? I'm not competing with that. Buy gifts for your family. You don't need, I don't need your money. Go enjoy your holiday. The second thing I want to talk about, I have it written down here as numerology. And the reason I have it written down as numerology is that whether or not you believe in it, we can talk about the spiritual aspect and we can talk about the more realistic aspect. Both are valid. One is that numerology would suggest everybody was going to have a bad year last year in business. That's what a seven year is. That's that. Seven years are about burning things down, about letting go of things, about rebuilding what you have, about slowness, retreat, 
reevaluation. Maybe you know someone who had a stellar 2023. I would like to meet them because I don't know fucking anyone. So when everybody's saying to me, oh my gosh, my 2023 is so hard. It's me. It's me. It's me. I'm thinking, name one person who's having a good year. It's not you. It's the industry. It's the year. Roll with the punches. It is not about you. Now, that's not to say don't get upset about it. Of course, that can be hard. It's challenging. You take it personally. I'm not saying that. I'm more so saying understand the trend of the industry. So whether or not you believe in numerology or not, the industry was slow. Buyer's behavior is changing. And if you don't want to have a slow time, adapt to buyer behavior, which I'm telling you about now. The great news is that we're in an eight year. Things start to turn around. People start to make more money, especially if you burn down what was supposed to burn down in 2023. You're supposed to have a much better year this year. Maybe you aren't spiritual. Maybe you don't like to find signs in every fucking thing so that you can find some chaos or something that makes sense in a chaotic world. But for me to know that last year was a bad year for everyone, I'm not bringing that into this year. Now, some people that I know are saying last year was so rough for everyone that now I need to be a little bit more careful. Now, I don't want to do the same things anymore. I can't deal with more rejection. I can't deal with another 2023. To me, that's telling ourselves that the 2023 year that was tough, that put you through the ringer, that that is the truth and it's ongoing. I don't believe that. I believe you get to make your own narrative a bit. I believe that if I bring 2023 into 2024, I'm responsible for making it happen again. Instead, the way I try to look at it is that 2024, I'm going to bring the same energy to the start of this year that I brought to the start of what ended up being a tough year for really everyone. And when I say a tough year, we did great. A lot of people financially did fine. I think that a lot of people were challenged and I think that a lot of people had to face some facts. That's all I mean. With that said, if you had a rough year last year, I want you to think about if that affected your energy. If it did, you might recreate some patterns. You might be scared in how you're showing up this year. You might be bringing some wounds of rejection and money fears and all of those super valid emotions into this year when I'm going to ask you to start anew. I want you to bring renewed energy. I want you to bring excited energy. I want you to think this is a new year and I can have a better one if I decide to. So be really sure of how you are thinking about this year. Be really cognizant of the thoughts that you're choosing around your situation. If you had a phenomenal year last year, keep it up, keep it going. But don't let negative years or hard years tell your mind that it's always going to be like this. Instead, allow your mind to hear and tell your mind it's not always going to be like this. And this year's going to be fun. Just you watch. The final thing that I've learned in last year that I'm definitely bringing this year is that I am done bitching about the coaching space. There are maybe five coaches that I've met that I don't feel are total fucking scam artists. The rest of you, like, I know that you're well-intentioned. I hope that you have a really bright future. I want you to make money. I want you to be successful. But the industry itself just breeds very negative and very harmful mindsets for women in general. Now, again, I'm generalizing, but I don't love the coaching industry. I don't love it, what it's become for women. I don't think that it's healthy, and I don't think it's very safe from a mental health capacity. I've been loud about that. I've called people out never by name. I would never do that. I've called out the industry and I've said my piece. Now, when I started being loud about this in 2020, nobody liked that. And I was the first one a lot of people heard saying, this is a pyramid scheme. This is a con. These people have no proven facts that they can lead as a business or personal development coach. They're taking a course and emulating it themselves. But you've heard me say that. And now it's very widely talked about. There's so much conversation about challenging coaches. There's so much conversation about what kind of skill set is required for a coach, what kind of experience is required for a coach. Now that that conversation is happening, I have to make a decision, and so do you, about if you want that to be a pillar of your content. To me, I don't care to make it a pillar of what I talk about anymore. I'd said my piece. I did my thing. I was loud when I wanted to be loud. And we've all got the message. I'm moving on. Now, if somebody wants to come and say to me like, oh, you know, I'm a coach and do you support coaches or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I might tell them behind the scenes, off the cuff, or maybe again, every once in a while on my social, it's not my thing. You know, I don't really love the industry. 
but I'm definitely not making it a pillar anymore. What I'm trying to say is that if you've been loud about it, now's your chance to decide I'm making it such a pillar because I'm going to keep being loud about it and strategically loud about it and I'm choosing that route. Or I would encourage you to think about if you want it involved at all. The topic's been discussed. People are aware of it. Get in, get out, but commit to whether or not you want this to be a pillar or whether you don't. I've said my piece. I'm done. To each their own. I want all women to succeed. I just also don't want you to be in a harmful situation that takes your money or that takes advantage of any weaknesses. Now, those are all the learnings that I have from 2023. Those are things that I'm bringing into the business this year among all of my businesses. And most importantly, said most weird, I am excited to be sharing these trends with you. If you want to download the full trend report, I have much more writing about kind of like what I believe about these subjects. And you can find that on the free website. No email necessary. Just click download and it's yours to view. And I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a little bit about what I view as trends in the space. And I hope that you go download the trend report whenever it comes live. Remember, the Doers Library and the Doers Club gets it before the quarter starts. So if you want to stay on top of things, you can join and get it there, as well as every single past trend report all the way back to, I believe, like Q2 2022. The fun thing I don't think I've ever been wrong. So that's kind of nice. You can actually go see that I predicted a lot of things that ended up happening. But I don't mean to brag. I just wanted to share. And I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Unfiltered Entrepreneur. See you next time. Before we go, I'm inviting you on my mission to help female entrepreneurs, okay? I am a girl's girl, and I want to see every single one of you empowered, living your biggest and boldest life in the easiest way for people to access free information and a community of like-minded women is by sharing this podcast. Leave a review on Apple, rate us on Spotify, but more than anything, if you liked this episode, please take a screenshot, share it to Instagram, and tag us so we know that you are loving loving the content, but also other people can see that you are an entrepreneur who is focused on her game. Now remember, the motto of the Team AP space is, it's not hard, it's new. And if nobody has told you this, I want you to remember, you've got this, entrepreneurship is hard. I love you, I believe in you, and I am so grateful to be in service of you, whether free or paid. And until next time, stay focused, babes.